Alrighty, um, this is Ms. Whitaker, and I just wanted to give a quick review of the first half of our semester exam review. Um, we will finish up the rest of the review on Monday in class, um, and I'll provide the second half of the video on Monday afternoon. Um, but until then, just take a look at the first half and make sure you've got that mastered. And then, like I said, we'll go over the second half on Monday. Um, let's just start at the beginning. I'm going to go pretty quickly. If you have any questions beyond what I do here, then just feel free to email me um, or you can ask me questions on Monday. All right, number one, we're adding 15 plus a negative 12. Just basically looking at it, I realize I have 15 positives and 12 negatives. So since I have more positives than negatives, then I know it's going to be a positive answer. So that disqualifies B and C. Um, so if I have 15 positives and then I, if I have that number line, make sure you, you see that in your head. If I'm going to the right 15 and then coming back 12, um, and I don't quite make it to zero, so I'm just a little bit um, to the right of zero, so three makes sense. To add the, or to apply the rule, if I'm adding different signs, I'm going to find the difference of them, which is 3, and give it the sign of the larger absolute value, which is 15, is bigger, and it's positive, so it's going to be a positive 3. All right, so be familiar with the integer rules, or make sure you're comfortable with a number line if you need to. Um, just make sure you know that. Now, number 2, when you were subtracting integers, it is a little bit more difficult when you have all these minus signs and, and negative signs. So when we subtract, we keep change change. So remember that rule when we're subtracting because it just makes it a little bit easier to understand. So I have, a, instead of a negative 9 minus a negative 5, I have a negative 9 plus a positive 5. So I keep change and change. So I change the minus to plus and I change the negative to a positive, change it to its opposite. So I'm going to add the opposite. So now I have a negative 9 plus a positive 5. Now I this time I have more negatives. So I know I'm going to have a negative answer. So that rules out B and C. So if I have a negative 9 and I'm going forward or to the right or positive 5, then I know I'm going to be at a negative 4 on that number line. All right, for number 3, negative 17 minus B. And B is going to be a negative 9. So I wrote that out first. Then I add the opposite or keep change change. So now I have a negative 17 plus a positive 9. More negatives. Again, get rid of your positives then if you know it's negative. So I have a negative 17. So on my number line, I'm going to the left and I'm coming forward 9. So I'm between 17 and 0, negative 17 and 0. So I know I'm at a negative 8 because I know that's too far. All right, multiply and divide rules for integers. Same signs positive, different signs negative. So I have same sign, so that's a positive answer, and 8 times 7 is 56. Number 5, y plus 3 equals 30. What I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides to isolate my variable. That leaves me with y on that side and leaves me with 27. Then check your answer. Just plug it in. 27 plus 3 equals 30. Yes, um, just make sure you check your answers. All right, number Six. I've got a plus and negative 15 equals 19. So how do I get rid of the plus negative 15? I subtract negative 15, both sides. And then I ended up keep change, change. So now it's 19 plus 15, which is 34. And then go back and check your answer. 34 plus a negative 15 should equal 19. All right, 3s equals 42. Um, I need to isolate the S, so I need to get rid of the 3, so I divide both sides by 3 and get 14. So check your answer, 3 times 14 equals 42. Alright, number 8, P divided by 5 equals 45. Now don't get this confused, don't do 45 divided by 5 equals 9, that's not the answer. It's a number divided by 5 will give me 45. So I undo division with multiply, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 5. 45 times 5 is 225. And then check your answer. 225 divided by 5 equals 45. All right, to compare these fractions, I need a common denominator. 42 is my common denominator. When I change my numerators, I end up knowing that this left fraction is less than, so that's the, the symbol that I want to choose, less than the right fraction. All right, multiplying fractions, I can put whole numbers over 1. 
like this. And then um, what I did was some cross-reducing. I'm looking for a common factor of my diagonal numbers. So I divide by that common factor. And 3 and 12, the common factor was 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. 12 divided by 3 is 4. You multiply your tops, multiply your bottoms. I get 5 fourths which is 1 and 1 fourth, but I also had some integers involved here, so I have different signs, negative 1 and 1 fourth. All right, let's move on. Number 2, I mean, sorry, number 11 on page 2. Um, when I'm dividing fractions, I multiply the reciprocal. So I'm going to keep the first one, 6 eighteenths, and I'm going to multiply the flip of the second fraction. So I'm going to flip the 6 and the 9. So then I'm going to do some cross-reducing here. And then I'm going to multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms. All right, um, dividing decimals. The rule for decimals is I cannot divide by a number other than an integer. So I've got to change that decimal, that 2.6, move the decimal to the end to make it a whole number. And if I moved it outside, I've got to move it inside, and then move it up, and then divide like normal. 0 0.05 was the um, closest to the answer that I was getting. And this isn't accurate. It just keeps going but this one I know is my answer. Number 13, adding fractions, I need a common denominator. That's very important. That's the most important thing. Um, and then I change my numerators, so then I end up with a negative 40 plus 88. Gives me a positive 48 over 110 and reduce to get 24 55 All right, number 14, my question actually, if I plug in for n, is 2 and 3 fourths plus 2 and 1 fifth. I took the 2 and 2 away, I'm going to save that for later and just did the fractions, get my common denominator, solve it, get 19 20ths, then combine that with the 4 from the whole numbers to get my answer for D. All right, number 15 is the vertical line test. A function means one input, one output. For every 1x, I only have one y. So they use this vertical line test on the graph of a function um, to just confirm if it's a function or not. If that vertical line intersects at only one place, then it is a function. It's Yes, this one's a function. But if it crossed or if it intersected the graph in more than one place, then I know that for every x there's more than one output if it intersected twice or more. So I know that that wouldn't be a function. But this one is a function because in my vertical line there's only one intersection. That only means for, you know, if x is a negative 1, then y is whatever this is. That's the only output for x is a negative 1. All right, um, please make sure you don't do a horizontal test. There's no such thing. All right, number 16. Uh, common difference in this er, arithmetic sequence. I'm, I just have to look at a pattern, see what I'm doing every time. I am decreasing by 13 every time, so it's going to be a negative 13. Um, and not a positive 13. Positive would be it, it's going up, it's increasing. But if it's decreasing, it's a negative common difference. Number 17, the next three terms, it looks like my common difference is a negative 7. I'm decreasing by 7 every time, so A is going to be your answer there. On number 18, 10 to the negative 8. Um, I know it's going to be a really, really tiny number. I know it's not going to be B. Um, so got these other answer choices with a bunch of zeros and I need to figure out. Now I could extend this pattern. 10 to the negative 3 would be 0.001. 10 to the negative 4 would be 0.0001. 10 to the negative 5, on and on. 0.00001. And if, hopefully you'll notice by then that if I've got 3 here, then I have three decimal places total. Four here, four decimal places. Five here, five decimal places. So if I'm looking for the eight, then I'm going to have eight decimal places. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight decimal places total. That's my answer. A is my answer for 18. All right, number 19, 8.88 times 10 to the sixth power. If I have a positive exponent, that's a big number. Okay, negative exponents are little numbers, small numbers. So big numbers, um, I know it's not going to be D for number 19, and I'm going to move that decimal six times. That's 10 to the 6 means 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. So I'm going to just keep moving. Every time I multiply by 10, I, I move it over. 
So I'm going to move it six times and you end up with 8,880,000. Number 20, it's a 10 to the negative 6, so I know it's a small number, so I know it's not C. So I'm going to move that decimal 6 to the left and I end up with B after I did that operation. All right, talking about square roots, now on number 21, the square root of 110 is between two integers. Integers are whole numbers, positive and negative. So name the integers that negative, uh, square root of 110 falls between. I know um, the perfect squares that I know are 100 and 121. That falls between 10 and 11. So make sure you know how to. Now, it's closer to, to 10 just by a little bit because it's 10 away from here, 11 away from here. So it's just, it's probably around 10.4 something. So just keep that in mind. Be able to estimate um, your square roots. All right, number 22. Elena's got this piece of wood, and the key to this piece of wood is that it's a square. And it's telling me that the area of the square is 165 square inches. Now, I know the area of a square is side squared, and it's asking me how long should, should the side be. So if the area is 165, I can take the square root of 165, and they'll tell me what just S is. And that rounds to the nearest tenth at 12.8. All right, number 23. I've got uh, Pythagorean theorem. This is the theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. You've got to remember this. Um, I'm going to plug in the legs. These I have the legs I have, and then I'm going to be looking for the hypotenuse. So plug in your numbers, um, and then solve 4 plus 16. So I've got 20 is equal to C squared. And that, when I get to this point, I know 20 is not the answer. That doesn't make sense. I want C, not C squared. So take the square root of 20, and that will give you 4.5 rounded to the nearest tenth. All right, number 24, same thing. Um, I'm given the two legs, looking for the, the C. Make sure you know how to, um, when you're given one of the legs and the hypotenuse, to, to look for a missing leg um, when you have to subtract from both sides. So don't forget that. All right, so plug in, and you should get, when you take the square root of 89, 9.43 to the nearest hundredth. All right, number 25, I just need to find two ratios equivalent to 33 over 57. Um, I divided by 3 or reduced it to get 11 nineteenths and then multiplied by 2 to get 66 over 114, which is letter A. Um, this one's improper, this one's improper, and this one is not right on B. So look at your other answer choices and make sure you've disqualified for good reason. All right, number 26, I'm going to simplify these two fractions to um, see if they are proportional. So they both simplify to one half. So yes, if they simplify to the same thing, then they're proportional. And number 27, um, it, saw, it says a factory worker can package 195 games in 15 minutes. How many ga games can he package in one minute? So this is it's basically a proportion, but I'm just really dividing to get a unit rate. They gave me a rate, and I'm looking for the unit rate, and you get 13 games in one minute. Okay, moving right along, number 28, um, tell whether these ratios are proportional. Um, I reduced 21 over 19, or 98 to 3 14 and found that that matches, so I know that they are proportional. Number 29, I set up this proportion. I want to know, is this proportional, 20 to 38 as 81 to 153? Are they proportional? No, they're not. Um, I can do cross products and see if they're equal, or I can reduce them and see if they're the same. Either case, I used cross products and knew that they're not equal. All right, number 30, three wrenches for $7, 12 screwdrivers for 28. You can use cross products, or you can, these are just like equivalent fractions, so 7 to 28 times 4, 3 to 12 times 4, so I know they're proportional, so that's a yes. Use proportions on number 31 to see which two rectangles are similar. Um, one and two are not. Um, I put those in proportions, putting the corresponding sides, making sure you put the short side with the short side, long side with the long side. They are not proportional, so it's not B. Um, and it turned out that one and three were proportional. Um, and then I just checked two and three, and they were not. So um, your answer is going to be C. Number 32, 
Mona needs to photocopy a 14 and a half centimeter wide by 16 centimeter long picture. She wants to enlarge it so that the length's 32. All right, I've got three numbers looking for that fourth number. Um, I've got one. I've got the um, the original of this picture, and so I know it needs to be proportional if I enlarge it. So I'm going to use this proportion. Keep the widths together and the lengths together. Um, so the widths are on top and the lengths on the bottom. Um, and the length is what I'm given of the new picture, so I just need to find the width. So use your cross products to solve. And this is also um, 16 to 32 is times 2, so I just need to multiply that by 2 to get 29. Number 33. The distance between two cities is 400 miles. On a map, they're 8 inches apart. So 8 inches on the map represents 400 miles. What's the scale of the map? So 1 inch represents 50 miles. Just go through all the answer choices and see which one works. But I just divided 400 by 8 to tell me what is in 1 inch or what represents um, what is represented in 1 inch. Number 34, the height of a tower on a scale drawing is 10 centimeters. The scale of the drawing is 2 centimeters represents 25 meters. So what's the actual height of the tower? If this is the scale and the scale drawing has shows the height of the tower at 10 centimeters. So set up your proportion using your scale. 2 centimeters represents 25 meters, so 10 centimeters represents blank meters. And do your cross products to get B. Number 35. Um, just make sure you know how to convert between percents and ratios or fractions. And you should get A, one-tenth is 10 percent. Forty percent converts to 40 over 100, which is two-fifths. And then two-thirds as a percent is 66.6 .6 repeating, and then I'm going to round that up. Number 36, I know if I'm going to compare these, I know that 27 hundredths is the same as 27 percent. So I know that easily 27% is less than 62%. All right, so that's the first half. Um, make, sure, make sure you're comfortable with that entire first half and then get busy on the second half. And that video will be available for you on Monday and the exams on Tuesday. All right, thanks.